hey, this is Vuin, this is Fundamentals of Positioning. And the Fundamentals of Positioning are to set yourself up to get kills and try and do so by making your shots as easy as possible to hit and your opponent's shots as hard as possible. That's really the fundamentals of CS in general. And the first thing you want to be questioning is, do you play an off angle or do you play a standard angle? And this is a question I get all the time. Well, if you have the question in your head and there's no answer, you should probably be playing a standard angle. And what makes a standard angle good? Well, a good standard angle is one where either you can take a shot and reposition, and that's really the essence of aggressive opping, getting a kill and falling off safely, or you have a lot of playability around the angle you're at, even if you can't reposition immediately. And that's why a spot like this on Dust2 here on B is so strong. So if you have a scoped weapon especially, you see people play this all the time in pro games or down beside the box as well. And the idea here is that you can easily get a kill on the first unsuspecting player because they're walking into an angle where they're expecting many different spots they have to clear, and you have kind of a headshot angle over the side of this box and definitely a headshot angle over this box here. But once you get that shot off, you can easily drop down and either play around this box where you can peek left and right or drop down. You can peek out here, even hold this angle here or here or something like that and catch your opponents in transition. And you can also do something like fall behind this box, hold the angle for a minute and allow your teammate to rotate in, buy some time for him to come in and throw a flash like this, or just to put pressure by coming somewhere like window and make them focus on more than one angle at a time. You're really catching them in an awkward spot when you do that. So that means an angle that has a lot of playability like this box here. We're just gonna quick pause to take a look at back pit on Inferno, which exemplifies what I'm trying to get across here. From back pit, you can peek the headshot angle over the wall here. You can peek beside it for the semi headshot angle or the other side for another semi headshot angle. All of these angles need to be cleared or held by different locations. And if they ever try to push up on you, they have to be worried about something like sight in the crossfire. This exemplifies an angle that has a lot of playability and is very strong. Another idea of an angle that has a lot of playability is the big box here in B. Now you probably don't want to be playing this when you're on CT side because if they're coming from tunnels, which they probably are, it's not the greatest angle, it's just a bit of an off angle and you would know if they were coming up mid to B through doors or window. However, this is one of the strongest spots when you get into after plants on B on Dust2 here because it's so easy to isolate angles and this is a very important positional concept. When you're positioning, oftentimes what you're trying to do is put objects in the way from where your opponents are shooting at you so you can focus on specific spots. And in an after plant on B on Dust 2, they're probably only sending one player tunnels so the off angle is incredibly effective. And if they're coming in from the other side, you can easily peek window and you're only isolated to tunnels, which you could smoke or you might have already killed the only tunnels player. You can easily focus on door and not be exposed to both. Or you can even get to a spot like this where you're focused on window and not exposed to either tunnels or door as well. So the ability to isolate different angles makes this box very playable. And you can also be peeking around both sides of it and doing lots of weird stuff like that. Now, when it comes to off angles, they get stronger and stronger, as you noted me mention with this big box, when there are less players alive. So when you're on the CT side and there are less players remaining in the server, these off angles become really good because your opponents have probably less utility. When you get late round in something like a 3v3, they've probably used a decent amount of their utility already and you don't have to worry about it. It also means that they're less likely to be in position to trade. They might be a little bit spread out, not expecting someone around that exact corner or having too many angles to clear safely to really do so. And you're more likely to get the multi-kill and they might not even have, you know, in a 3v3, the third player there, he might be a little bit far off, you know, doing a split or doing something weird and you can get a couple kills and potentially reposition. If you're in a 5v5, they're probably coming through the main angle with more than two players, which means you're almost certainly going to be traded. So as rounds get later and later and you get into more, sp more awkward situations where you're dealing with less players, then off angles become incredibly strong and certainly something you want to be playing.
So you want to be making sure that you're positioning yourself according to the situation that you're in. Again, as rounds get to lower numbers of players, you can play more and more off angles and worry less about getting traded and worry less about allowing your teammates to rotate. As well, you want to be thinking about the bomb site you're playing. This is a very important concept to realize when you're the solo site player, you probably want to be playing a bit differently than if you're playing something like A on Dust 2. Because if you're playing B, getting a kill and dying is almost losing your team the round because they can so easily hold on to this bomb site it's very tough to retake the rotates are very far away and you're the only one that can be relied upon to get kills and hold on to the bomb site whereas if you're playing a spot like you know long a on dust 2 there's two other a players there with you so you can focus a little bit more on fragging out playing off angles and catching your opponents and getting two kills than you would if you were playing a spot like b so when you're playing a spot like b or any small bomb site you know usually it's b like b on barrage b on dust 2 things like that you want to be thinking about getting a kill and staying alive and that's where getting a kill and repositioning comes into play. You get a kill, you stay alive, you allow your teammates to rotate so the bomb doesn't get instantly planted after you die and kind of start the clock timer down sooner. But you also allow your teammates to rotate over and put more pressure. You can have the mid player come throw a flash like that. He can come in, he can put pressure from doors. Now there's multiple players they have to be worried about instead of isolating you all on your own. Again, when you're playing a spot like A on Dust 2, you can be playing spots that are a little bit different and a little bit more off angly, I suppose you would say, because you're in a situation where if all three of the players on A site get two kills, well, there's only five players on the enemy team, you win the round. You know, if you get two kills on B, your team still needs to play out that round. And because you're the only player there, you can easily die and essentially give away the round if you only get one kill or especially if you don't get any and when it comes to holding an angle that is a good angle especially if you have a rifle you want to be thinking of the idea of jiggling or peak unpeaking we'll call it peak unpeaking because it's a little bit different than jiggling and the idea is that if you're playing an angle that is not an off angle and you have no real advantage then you don't want to be holding it static a spot like a site here is a really good example of an angle people like to hold static they think because only your head is showing that this angle can be played like this and you just stand still however the problem is there's no pressure on your opponents when they're peeking into you when a t is peeking into this angle they're really only exposed to this angle and goose which is kind of unlikely that someone's hiding there and then peeks out it's kind of weird they're only really exposed to you and they can clear it concisely and you're not far enough away that you have a real advantage there so instead of just holding the angle as a static angle you can be doing unpeak re-peaking so you're crouching behind the box wait 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 a few seconds, and then you stand up and you take the shot. And the idea is that this player might clear this angle, hold for half a second, which you should be doing as well in case they're doing that, and then move to the next, and you peek your head up and you catch them as they're not looking at you and you grab that kill. This is really important when you're rifling, again, angles where your opponents are expecting you and they can clear you safely. An angle that they might be expecting you but can't really clear you safely would be pit. And even if they were expecting you here and they couldn't clear you safely this is a little bit better because you can be peeking with your head here or your head over here and that's actually pretty different when you're a t walking into the angle these are actually different angles it's not as concise but also this is really good because when they peak pit where are they they're in the middle of the open positionally they're in a very bad spot they don't want to be here so they're more likely to be strafing wide trying to clear you and have to stop and shoot back and that's why other angles something like you know you can even play an angle like this where your opponent's now if they're coming out, they have to worry about right side and left side. They might not be looking at you. Spots like this, again, because they have to clear the box and this corner, it's not that bad. This is the type of position you're looking to play if you're statically holding an angle. If you're not playing a position like that, you probably want to be doing something like peak unpeaking. Now, I mentioned this angle here. You're in the middle of the open when you shoot at this pit player. This is more T positioning. When you're T positioning, you're thinking, 
Okay, I'm in the middle of the open. So something people do a lot of the time intuitively is they're trying to strafe out to the blue bin here. Think about it for a second why you're strafing out to the blue bin. What you're doing is you're isolating this side. And this goes back to what I mentioned, isolating angles. You're making sure that this player on the corner that might peek out on you can't clear you easily as you focus on pit. And you can do something fairly similar when you're trying to clear out, you know, you're trying to get close to pit. Some people, you'll, you'll see them do this type of movement, right? They'll, they'll back up along this wall and do this kind of thing. And the reason they're doing that is because they're making this pit player's angle very tough. This pit player, to peek out on someone that's back there, he's going to have to come up like this. It's very awkward, and he's going to be now exposed to multiple different angles. And then you can see them kind of clear out the one side, get a flash, and jump and clear into pit, right? So what they're doing is they're making it so that pit player would have to overextend to shoot them while they clear the other side and they're making sure they're only dealing with one spot at a time and this is aggressive positioning the other thing you want to think about when you're on CT side positioning is making sure you're varying your position. And that doesn't mean just playing a different passive angle every single round, but rather you want to be thinking about playing sometimes aggressive angles and sometimes passive angles. Obviously, you don't want to be playing the same angle every round or every time you go aggressive, you play one angle. Every time you go passive, you play one angle. You want to be making sure that your opponents have to clear out everything concisely and they have to use utility to do so to give yourself the best advantage a position can be good but if your opponents know you're going to be there it stops being quite as strong and that's why this idea you know there's plenty of reasons to be smoking the long doors here to give yourself time to position and get into good spots but one of the things that it does is it means that a player that is posted on this angle here cannot know whether or not you cross and that means if the players coming out long doors later have to clear left and and right side however if you hadn't smoked that angle then they could know if you're on the left side and if they know you didn't cross they can then ignore this portion of the angles and this is the idea that you're getting to when you're playing sometimes aggressive sometimes passive you're making sure that they have to very clearly clear out every single angle they can't save utility to clear out the passive spots and they're more worried about every single position you can be the same thing can be true by the way with that long door smoke the same thing is true of the tunnel smoke there's tons of reasons that you want to throw that smoke but one of the things it also does is it means you could be here you could be here or you could be on the box at back plat which makes it very hard for them to clear out the site as opposed to when they only have to clear out one side now when it comes to positioning let's look at box here on back plat because with everything I've said before about playability this doesn't seem like that great of a spot and I think if you have an M4 it's not amazing however the idea behind this spot is that although you're only kind of re-peaking from the same angle you can vary your head position so they can't fully post on you the way they'd like to but also for them to clear this spot out they would have to throw a molly from pretty pushed up in tunnels and you can catch them as they're throwing it you also are very long range with a headshot angle and the longer range you are with a headshot angle typically the better that headshot angle works it's harder for them to clear it very effectively it also is a spot where you can survive for a long time if you do happen to have a smoke left over which you probably don't but if you do and they molly you out you can smoke off the molly and then kind of stay hidden here and they constantly have to be worried about this position while trying to clear everything else out so although there's not too much playability in theory around this angle it is a pretty strong spot for a number of different reasons and there's a few spots on different maps that play out like that where in theory if you just think about playability and you just think about being able to get a shot and reposition it might not be that amazing but when you actually look at the specifics of it it plays out quite well the final thing I want to mention is communication and while this might not specifically help you with your positioning it will help you with the way your teammates position you want to make sure you're giving your teammates an idea of how you're playing out around whenever you can if you tell your teammates you're gonna be playing close mid doors with a rifle it gives them the ability to think to themselves how can I play around that before you get into a situation where they need to support you and if you don't tell your teammates what you're doing you're leaving it up to their kind of micro reactions to figure out how to play around you and oftentimes they're going to overextend trying to save you in situations where they get themselves killed in doing so and oftentimes as well positions are 
are only strong when your teammates are playing around them correctly. So if you have good communication and you let your teammates know, you know, I'm going to be trying to get to back box on dust or on plat here, or I'm going to be playing close mid doors with a rifle. It allows your teammates to take complementary positions that allow your spot to be very strong instead of just kind of mediocre. So certainly communication plays into how good your positioning works because positioning with your teammates is always stronger than positioning just on your own. So anyways, thanks for watching and I hope this helped. If you liked the video, hit the sub button. Hit the notification bell as well if you want to be notified whenever the videos get released. If you really like the video, you can hit me up on Patreon, which is just a way to support your content creators. Thanks for watching. See you next time.